Hi guys, back down in the workshop today and I'm about to start my next little project. I've got a fire going there. Um, it's about minus 25 outside Celsius. So it's pretty cold down here in the basement. Um, if you remember from my last video, I uh, built this little power supply. And the reason why I, I built that in the first place, obviously to do some testing on electro, electrical equipment. But uh, another reason was I'm looking to build a little tumbler, like a rock tumbler, or for beach glass or whatever else. So I did this little sketch. It's not, not the, the best sketch, but uh, the idea is I'm going to use uh, just a piece of two by eight on the bottom, two little pieces of wood on the sides. I've got some three quarter inch uh, wooden dowel that I'm gonna use for you know, the little rollers. Got a, I don't know if you can see those there, a couple of bearings, uh, some bolts, a piece of, uh, square stock um, or key stock to hopefully fit in this little uh, um, square groove here. I've got a wiper motor which I'm supposed to be 50 rpm according to websites that I've checked um, but uh, I just took my little uh, rpm gauge and tested it quick and it's, it's hard because the, the uh, output is so small on it but I'm getting about 300 rpm so it seems a lot faster and that's at 12 volts but uh, i did put it on the low voltage side of my uh, power supply here and i was able at six volts to cut the uh, speed in half so i can even turn that down a little more if i need to um, at 50 rpm uh, i was going to have about 14 rpm on the drum which seemed a little slow so if I can get it around 100, it might be about 30 RPM, so that might be a little bit better. So I'll play with that and see how that works. As for a drum, got this guy here. Still lots of peanut butter in it, but uh, I'm gonna eat that up and uh, clean clean that out. And that's gonna be my drum. Um, with As with a lot of my projects, I like to do this stuff. One, on the cheap side, uh, use materials that I have hanging around so I don't have to buy too much to try to use stuff that uh, maybe isn't really designed for that sort of thing um, and an example of that is uh, i was looking at abrasives for um, rock tumblers and they have all the different grits that you're going to go down to start from rough uh, to final polishing and they're quite expensive i see uh, like 60 some dollars canadian for you know a, a set of the four different types of uh, of abrasives but I'm gonna try um, obviously I don't want to spend more money than I have to on just a dinky little project like this but I'm going to try using uh, sandblasting uh, copper slag um, as my most uh, aggressive grit and uh, then I'm gonna play with some other stuff maybe uh, vim or some abrasive cleaners um, and maybe toothpaste. So I'm gonna see I've got a couple of polishing compounds and um, different stuff from uh, uh, automotive stuff for paint finishing. So we'll see what, what works and what doesn't. Uh, I think it'll be a fun experiment. So uh, here's my, my drawing. Uh, I've just got a little motor attached to uh, a little piece of wood. Uh, like I said, the wooden dowel. The drum is just gonna sit on top. It's gonna turn, pretty simple. Um, so I'm gonna start putting that together and see how it works.
So my key stock is just a little bit too big to fit inside that motor. Must be a difference between metric and standard. So I'm going to just sand that down a little bit so it fits. That's good. So now to attach the motor to the, uh, the drive shaft, uh, what I'm going to do is drill a hole into this bolt and insert the end of the keystock and I'm going to see if I can solder that and that should be sufficient. So I'm going to see if that'll work. Okay, so I've got the hole drilled and I just flushed everything. This is how it's going to fit in. So I'm going to see if uh, what solder I have is going to work. I've got some lighted, but I'm going to try the lead free first. We'll see if that works. Okay, now that that's uh, cooled off, it looks like it's going to hold pretty good. It should be sufficient for how, how much torque is going to be from coming from that motor. So I'm going to test fit that now. Okay, so I got a couple of dabs of hot glue on there for some grip and I may not use these shafts but at least uh, tell me if the motor has enough power or if it's going to work. Happy with that. I think I might uh, change out those uh, those axles, but uh, I think this might just work. Okay, so as usual, I just make this stuff up as I go along. Um, there's a slight change of plans I decided to make. Um, originally, I was going with these little wooden shafts, but I'm just not equipped to um, drill that hole really straight into the center of the shaft. I don't have a good vise for my. Uh, I drill press, I don't have uh, a lathe or anything, so what's happening is these are a little bit off center and they're all over the place, plus soldering that uh, shaft on the uh, bolt is not that straight either, so it's a whole bunch of crooked on there. <laughs> it's not working out. So what I decided to do is actually spend a whole $10, went down the Princess Auto, got myself a piece of threaded rod, so I'm gonna go with threaded rod shafts. Then I've got these little, uh, vibration damper bushings whatever they're called I cut the stud off and I drilled through so now I'm gonna put two of those on each shaft and they've got a nice grip to them too so I'm hoping it'll grip the uh, drum quite well and then I'll just leave one a little bit longer and notch the end with a little bit of a, a square edge so that it'll fit the motor and hopefully that'll work so I'm gonna get to that right now okay so I did a little work off camera I've got my two shafts cut here and you can see I notched the end of this uh, this rod so I can fit the motor. You can see the little square end in there. I've got a nice fit, nice and tight. So I'm going to put this on with the uh, bushings and uh, we'll see how that works. Now I'll just do a quick test with the uh, drill just to see how it works. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll put the motor on there just temporarily so I can get a count of how many RPM that drum's going to spin at. Okay, so I've just got the motor on there temporarily. I've got our power supply connected. We're on the low voltage side, which is connected at six volts right now. And I stuck a little uh, reflector sticker on the old peanut butter jar. And we're gonna see what RPM we're gonna run at. 
and this is going to be adjustable too so if it's too slow or too fast I should be able to turn it down I'm not sure how low I can go with this motor but, uh, we'll see how this goes I'm not sure if you can see that on the uh, camera there, but we're at about 107, 108 RPM, so a little over 100 RPM, but I may be a little fast, but uh, we'll wait till we get some product in there and we can adjust it from there. So I made up this little motor mount, just a little block of the 2x8, shaped it a little bit, and uh, that's just going to fit here, slide in like that. So I'm going to attach that there. Now before I attach this, um, I still have to heat all this peanut butter so that I have an empty drum. So in the meantime, it's probably going to take about a week. Um, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to stain all of this so it might look a little bit better. It's kind of rinky dink right now, but maybe it'll look better with some stain. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I've got a little light oak here. So I'm going to do those two pieces up. I'm also going to give the uh, body of the motor a nice little spray, just some sparkly black paint. Okay, so while that dries, now I have to empty the, uh, the drum here. So to do that, I'm going to make a couple of sandwiches. Now we're going to do peanut butter and banana. I don't know if any of you have ever had that before. Let me know in the comments. This is something that my mom made for me quite a bit when I was a kid and I like them. I'm gonna put lots of peanut butter because I have lots to use up here. There, that's a lot of sandwiches. I better get eating. Well, this is bad timing. We got a ton of snow last night, and now I need to dig out some rocks. So I've got a little spot here in the shovel, and I'm gonna see if I can find something half decent. Everything's looking pretty small. Oh, I got a couple here. Let's see what I can find. You. A couple here. We got it. Not very big. Well, I guess we can start with that. I'm not sure how many need to be in there, but uh, I've got a couple here. More here, too. I really don't know anything about rock tumbling at all. I probably should have did a bit of research first, but learn by trial and error. That's how I learn most stuff. Oh, there's a nice big one there. Got that. All right, well, we'll start with these little guys, see what happens. Here we are back inside. Here are my parts, nice and dry now. I just put a thin coat of clear on there, not too, not too thick, so it's not overly shiny. Now I'm going to take the tape off the motor here, which is now a bit of sparkly black. It's not perfect, but it looks a little better. I'm gonna screw that down, screw the mount in, and uh, we'll see if it still works. Okay, so the motor is now attached. It's quite secure. It seems like it's gonna work good. I've got the power supply connected to it. I've got my peanut butter jar, nice and empty. Um, now, I've been thinking about this, and this is a pretty thin plastic jar. Um, it's pretty likely that the rocks 
and the, and the abrasive are just going to wear right through this and it's going to fall apart. It's uh, PETE, so I don't know how strong that is. <clears throat> I think it's polyethylene, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think it should be quite strong, but it's so thin that it's probably going to wear through. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think are, is going to happen and uh, we'll try it out and see. So as you can see, it's working pretty good. I'm happy with how this setup is. Uh, I'm gonna fill it with some rocks, some abrasive, some water, and I'm gonna plug it in and let it run for a while and see what happens. So with that, it's gonna get a sticker to certify that it's complete, as is. Stick that right there. That's another project done, so let's load it up and give it a go. So I decided to set this up on the floor just in case this does happen to leak. Uh, the mess will be here and not all over my tools and the walls and everything. So I've got a bag of rocks, very much. I've got my water. I've got a big bag of abrasive that I got for free from my old... Uh, place of work it's copper slag so this is really aggressive stuff um, comment below if uh, you view something like this if you think it's gonna work so I'm going to add this stuff and we'll see how it goes first I'm gonna throw all the rocks into our jar and I'm gonna pour in some of this copper slag now I've read a little bit about um, doing this rock tumbling. I have zero experience. I think you're only supposed to add a few teaspoons, tablespoons, I don't know. But for me, more is more. So I'm gonna add a ton of this. That should be good. So I've added about that much. Oh, you can't see, right there. No, maybe we can do more than that. I really want this stuff to do something, so I'm going to add a lot. And it's probably going to make a mess. Okay, there's probably metal bits in there because this sandblast media has been used so it's probably we're probably gonna end up with some rust okay so i've got some water here and from what i did read is you want to make sure there's enough water to just cover the top of the rocks so that's about uh, a third of the way so let's see what that looks like This is going to make a mess. Oh boy. I'm going to put lots of water. Oh boy, this is going to be so messy. Seal that good. Hopefully that's not going to leak. Okay. Looks like everything's covered. Yeah. Oh, moment of truth. Let's put that on there. Start it up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, leave that for a couple of days, come back, check on it, and we'll see what it looks like. As for you guys, you'll have to wait for my next video to get the results. Uh, I'm posting this just now. This is the build video, and then we'll have another video with the results of this, the first run. And like I said, I want to try some different stuff like Vim, um, like maybe baking soda, toothpaste, um, I've got some car polish or abrasives, so I'll try some different stuff and we'll see what works. Uh, comment below if you guys have any ideas of what I can try. Um, you're welcome to make bets to see how long this thing's going to last. I'm thinking not long because I can see it's already starting to leak, so I better tighten up that lid. But uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Um, 
Please subscribe if you guys haven't already. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button, like this video, and uh, check out my website, Instagram, Facebook, all that other stuff. Order stickers if you'd like some. I've got a new batch in, so I've got plenty to send out. And if you already have some, take pictures of your stickers on your toolbox or whatever and uh, post them on my Facebook wall. And as usual, thanks for watching, guys. So before I let you guys go, I should explain what I did to address the leak. Uh, I took the drum back off, opened it up. It looks like some of the abrasive got on the inside of the lid and it was causing it not to seal very well. So I cleaned all that out. I wrapped te Teflon tape around the drum, then put the lid back on. And then I ran a couple of layers of electrical tape, nice and tight, just as a, you know, a backup plan to keep that from leaking. So uh, we'll come back in a little while and see what that looks like.